Hi, my name is Dr. Nyam from the National University Health System in Singapore. Today, it gave me great pleasure to present the topic of Endeavor AI for healthcare analytics and prediction. In National University Health System in Singapore, we have been uh, implementing artificial intelligence in healthcare for over five years. And to start this uh, session off, I first want to share with you how we deploy uh, artificial intelligence in practice. In reality, if you look at the definitions of artificial intelligence and augmented intelligence, we are really practicing augmented intelligence instead of what most people think of as artificial intelligence. This is an important distinction because we use this definition to design and deploy tools that help our doctors perform better at their work rather than to replace what they do. And because of this definition, many of the tools we build are intended to help our doctors on a day-to-day -day basis in real time. So we've developed a uh, stream-capable platform called Endeavor AI. So Endeavor AI is able to capture data from the EMR system and feed it into the AI model that are within uh, the uh, container architecture of uh, Endeavor AI and send back alerts to the EMR system that uh, tells a, a clinician about predictions or any uh, critical information that they may need to act on particular uh, patients. This uh, Endeavor AI layer is connected to the underlying discovery AI layer that was previously built for the purposes of uh, developing AI tools. We have further connected this layer to the uh, uh, commercial cloud layer, enabling it to access internet services and provide things such as chatbot services to our patients, and also to allow industry to participate in the development of uh, AI capabilities for the healthcare sector. So to enable all these capabilities, um, we needed to build uh, data engines uh, that, is, that are able to stream data. So if you compare the different kinds of data engines and their capabilities, one can see that uh, from the left to the right, we see different generation of ability to use data. So over 10 years ago, we used paper. And as you know, uh, paper is... Uh, it's very limited in, in many sense. Uh, it's static information. Uh, you could not record a lot of information because it would be too tedious to write and uh, all the information down. And paper records uh, uh, need to be transported from point to point. So if you consider that the, 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 the kind of power that drives uh, paper records, it, it is humans, right? It's the mitochondria that allows you to drive the, the, record, the record of this uh, uh, electronic, uh, medic sorry, these uh, paper records. So if you go towards the current generation or last uh, decade or so, where most uh, hospital systems start to have electronic medical records, uh, this allows this uh, information to be uh, retrieved by uh, various clinicians at any site that has a computer. And this is analogous to using petrol, right, where you fuel um, the, 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 the data through a uh, electronic system that allows it to be shared at any time and any place. However, the way you access this information is by extract, transform, and load. So this ETL process is uh, currently is the current practice of many EMR systems, and it allows you to transact data sizes in the megabyte range and provides you the capability to uh, deploy clinical decision support systems that are largely rule-based at this point. Uh, some uh, health systems develop the enterprise service path system that enables batch processing of data uh, at near real time uh, in, in the sense that you could share this data at near real time uh, with various uh, members throughout the uh, healthcare ecosystem. And this is analogous to um, a, a rocket where you use liquid propellant and you propel a certain amount of data in the batch process um, to enable various capabilities. And of course, you could send large sizes of data in gigabyte range and enable some other additional uh, clinical decision support capabilities. However, if you think about um, being able to stream data in real time, right, this completely transforms the ability of healthcare systems to use data. 
live processing of data enables live analytics and AI to be realized. Event-driven architecture that's also built to be distributed and fault tolerant allows you to then uh, have stable and capable uh, AI systems running in real time. So this is equivalent to a, a Alcubierre drive, which is what most of us know as a warp drive. Uh, this is this is incredible capability to stream data in real time, and not only stream it, but stream it in large sizes. Right, we're talking about terabyte size of data in real time, and this completely transforms your ability to use systems such as AI. So um, in Endeavor AI, we have implemented dream capable AI, and this has transformed the way we can deliver insights to our clinicians on a day-to-day -day basis. So using the Kafka data stream within Endeavor AI, we are now able to stream large amounts of all clinical data from the electronic medical record system, everything from the demographics, the visits and encounters, to labs, radiology reports, clinical notes, medications and procedures and other sources of data such as finance, sensor, and social media data. So this data is seen in, within the Endeavor AI platform in real time. Now this streaming data is captured by the various microservices that consume this data flow. And this data is therefore uh, processed by these microservices that produce an outcome that can be consumed by various service applications that require such services. So for example, there are microservices that uh, consume, uh, say for example, lab and demographic data to generate a prediction such as the, such as the estimated length of stay, which I'll share later. And these results can then be consumed by further service applications for a variety of purposes, such as uh, predicting state states and et cetera. So one of the most obvious uses of uh, stream capable uh, data is to display them without much processing. One can build dashboards on Spotfire that can show um, various departments throughout the hospital. So in this particular case, the emergency room, uh, we are showing the various waiting times uh, of of uh, within, the, within the emergency room uh, in the hospital, as well as at what state uh, stage uh, in which uh, patients are waiting for their turn to be, to be seen. Uh, this also allows us to run clinical analytics, such as being able to show up uh, whether the different kinds of presentations that are, uh, that are incident upon the uh, emergency room at any one point of time. Now, this streaming data also allows us to do other things, such as uh, run predictive models that can predict the patient load over the next uh, couple of days. So in this particular case, we are able to predict up to seven days ahead for the emergency room uh, uh, attendances in the next seven days. And we can even drill down to uh, each emergency room uh, state uh, in terms of uh, the severity of the patients attending the emergency room. Uh, this particular dashboard also shows the number of patients who have waited for beyond a certain time. And you can then drill down specifically on patients with long wait times and address their, uh, their uh, queue so that you can improve the patient satisfaction at the emergency department. One of the other uh, great advantages of having streaming data is that if you could stream the data across multiple organizations, you can then uh, achieve amazing things uh, in terms of uh, clinical care as well as quality. So this particular initiative called the Horace Initiative uh, is one that uses uh, data across the entire uh, NUHS cluster consisting of four hospitals and several polyclinics to look for specific patients in, uh, in the healthcare setting. Now, in this case, uh, we are looking for the patients with primary hyperparathyroidism. And how do we do that? We achieve that by uh, building rules and scripts to pick out patients with high calcium as well as high PTH levels. So that is the biochemical definition of uh, primary hyperparathyroidism. Before implementing this particular initiative, um, patients are typically referred for surgery only about four years after the date of first detection. Now with this initiative, we are able to see patients at the point when they are being diagnosed with uh, hyperparathyroidism 
and they can be then referred for surgery at an appropriate time. So this ability to see across the entire uh, healthcare cluster gives almost unlimited abilities to pick up and predict uh, and or preempt uh, certain conditions and address these uh, conditions early in the disease course. You will notice that in this program, we are also able to pick up patients with high calcium but low parathyroid hormone. And these patients could have uh, an a early diagnosis of cancer, for example. So we are at this point uh, using this tool to pick up a variety of different uh, conditions, even before they are uh, obvious to the attending doctor uh, who are ordering these tests. So in another real-world application, um, we have employed Endeavor AI uh, as part of the pharmacogenomic workflow within the National University Health System. So on the top here, you could see uh, the standard pharmacogenomics workflow for clinical workflow, where if a doctor is ordering a medication, a, a system, a script will run to check if the patient has a, uh, a variant of significance to that particular medication and pop up an alert to the clinician to say that this patient may have a uh, drug gene interaction. And therefore, the doctor can then either reduce the dose or change the medication to be given to the patient. Um, we also recognize that there are many uh, drug gene pairs that are not yet validated and will require validation before they can be considered clinical grade alerts. So we store this information within Endeavor AI. And whenever a doctor orders a drug, a web service call is uh, sent to Endeavor AI where we will then consume uh, that, that web service call and check the research database for potential drug gene interactions. Now, should a mutation uh, occur, uh, be found or rather, um, you will then be alerted to the clinician to send a confirmatory test for a particular um, gene mutation that may contribute to a drug gene uh, interaction. So this system has been in production for the past uh, one year or so, and we're already seeing benefits from having this system, not just on the clinical level, but from the research and development level uh, for new potential uh, drug gene pairs. So this pharmacogenomic alert, uh, this is one of the first uh, capabilities in Asia where we have a uh, real-time uh, pharmacogenomic uh, advisory that pops out on Endeavor AI that uh, advises clinicians of particular uh, uh, star alleles or mutations that might affect uh, the metabolism of a particular drug. So this information is made available in real time to our clinicians and is only possible because of streaming data. Uh, this effort has uh, won as a, a gold award in the Asian Healthcare uh, Awards in 2022. And we look forward to more uh, such recognition for uh, new clinical services that are made possible by stream-capable platforms like Endeavor AI. One of the key features of uh, the stream capability is the ability to contact switch directly from uh, the EMR system. So in this case, you can see a landing page uh, where you can contact switch from the EMR system seamlessly into this landing page where all the various uh, AI tool alerts are being displayed. So these AI tools um, are predict for different things. So you can see here, for example, we are in two different AI tools running here. So there's one AI tool called CHAMP that is running to pick up um, anomalies in blood pressure readings for patients in the community uh, and also provide that and can also provide advisory to our clinicians in terms of uh, the appropriate uh, dosing strategy based on guidelines. Another tool that uh, you can see here is the estimated length of gate predictor for patients who are admitted to the hospital, uh, which I'll share in a minute. So this uh, estimated length of state predictor is the NLP-based uh, tool that's run in real time on Endeavor AI. So what it does is that it takes the, um, the clinical notes that the doctor uh, enters at the point of the patient's admission to the hospital. It passes it to our ELOS uh, NLP tool that predicts the length of stay for a particular patient. Uh, and it 
shows up, for example, in this case, the, uh, the highlights of the features that the machine has deemed to be important to making that prediction of a particular length of stay. Now, estimated length of stay is extremely useful for our clinicians because at the day one of the patient's admission, this tool is able to highlight to clinicians uh, certain factors that they might have overlooked uh, that might contribute to a, a long length of stay, for example. And our administrative staff use this particular tool to predict bed states uh, going forwards because they are able to now predict the length of stay uh, of all patients who are admitted to a hospital. So this tool is currently running in production within Endeavor AI uh, and is used by not just clinicians, but administrators for a variety of downstream uh, uh, capabilities, such as predicting deteriorations uh, of patients who are staying in the hospital, for example. Now, moving beyond the cognitive kind of capabilities that uh, these uh, stream-capable AI platforms provide, we want to give um, the AI tools arms and legs, literally, to support our uh, clinical staff in the front line. So from about three years ago, uh, when we conceptualized Endeavor AI, we conceptualized it to work with commercial cloud instances, such as the, the AWS commercial cloud instance, and to build AI capabilities uh, within the commercial cloud as breakout capabilities. So these capabilities have, are now being developed for the purposes of deploying uh, ward-based uh, uh, service robots that support our nurses and our doctors in the ward. To make this a reality, we have to install uh, 5G, indoor 5G networks that allow us to have a seamless connection between the robot and the commercial cloud. Uh, and this forms a concept called the cloud robotics. That is the most of the processing of the robot capabilities happen on the cloud. Uh, whereas the uh, 5G allows us to have this low latency and high throughput connection between the robot and the cloud. So you can see from this diagram that uh, a task could initiate from Endeavor AI based on a particular triggering factor. So take the example of medication dispensation. So a doctor orders a drug and the, the drug is then order is pushed to Endeavor AI, sent to the commercial cloud and it's assigned as a task for a robot to uh, perform this uh, medication dispensation. So this robot will pick up the medication according to the task scheduler, delivers it to the ward, and dispenses that medication to the patient. It leverages existing technology that's built on the commercial cloud, such as the chatbot, to be able to undertake these dispensation tasks. So we are not just building Endeavor AI as the pure on-premise AI tool that does cognitive functions. It is also capable of uh, executing uh, functions on the commercial cloud, which can then be translated into real-world actions uh, on, on platforms such. So uh, this, this is our robot, uh, we call it Missy, uh, and it's designed to support our nurses in the ward and also in the, uh, in the front line, such as the emergency room department. It's built with the nurses and pharmacists uh, in mind, uh, and we built it in a way that would improve their efficiency and their day-to-day -day workflow. Uh, as I said, it's com connected to the commercial cloud securely uh, using 5G. Uh, it has modular components that allow us to swap out different uh, use cases, as well as uh, unlimited uh, range due to stoppable batteries. Finally, it is loaded full of sensors that will allow these machines to uh, help monitor our patients which is often a task that is extremely time-consuming and mundane for many of our, uh, our clinicians in the world. So not only are we reaching beyond the cognitive components as well as the physical components within the world, we are reaching beyond the hospital into the community. Uh, so we have introduced a program called CHAMP. So CHAMP is our chronic disease management program for the community uh, in the west of Singapore. Um, this leverages uh, AI capabilities that are Endeavor AI to uh, undertake a number of tasks that support uh, our patients in the community. So what happens here is that a patient is able to communicate with Endeavor AI CHAMP module 
using the uh, one and just app or they are able to do so on WhatsApp as well. So this uh, interfaces uses chatbot to um, communicate with the patients and these chatbots reside within the commercial cloud instances. However, the background information of the patient uh, comes from within the EHR system and this is pulled from the system into Endeavor AI where we run a segmentation logic uh, that uh, helps us justify our patient's care and combine this with the patient's reported uh, vital signs such as the blood pressure, we are then able to generate customized nudges to our patients to improve their care uh, of their chronic disease. And on the back end, our care coordinators and our doctors are able to view uh, this information on the dashboard. Now, this is important because it allows them to prioritize patients who have a higher risk or poorer care uh, and for, and for them to contact these patients when they need to. So we see CHAM as the fourth multiplier for our chronic disease management program because with the same number of care coordinators, we can now look after a lot more patients with the help of the AI that sits within Endeavor AI. So um, we came up with the segmentation logic that is able to look after patients of different types with different types of needs. So on the left, you can see that there are uh, the, the large number of patients who are essentially healthy, but we want to ensure that they continue to stay healthy by helping them monitor their blood pressure, for example. And this would uh, reduce their chances of developing or progressing along the disease. For patients who are already having the disease that are largely stable uh, with episodic uh, deterioration, CHAM helps to keep them on track so that they don't uh, have uh, more frequent episodes of uh, deterioration and resulting in uh, A and E attendances. And finally, patients who are not uh, doing too well, that means they are already seeing hospital specialists. CHAM is designed to provide the, uh, the close intensive monitoring that is required to support patients with uh, severe disease in the community uh, that would otherwise be uh, too difficult or too uh, intense for uh, any one uh, care coordinator to look after. So CHAMP is able to provide AI-generated nudges via WhatsApp chatbot, and it will be supported uh, by human intervention where necessary. So the care teams have the flexibility to choose how CHAMP integrates with their existing care model because it's essentially a customizable AI tool that supports uh, the patient's care in the community. So the segmentation logic is not simply a calculation of uh, risk factors. So the segmentation score is based on 12 triggering and non-triggering risk, risk factors. And, the, and uh, the information of uh, the, these uh, risk factors are stored within Endeavor AI and streamed uh, whenever the patients are triggered, uh, whenever the patients trigger a particular uh, vital signs to the Endeavor AI platform. This score, together with a response score, uh, will, will be equal to a nudging score. The nudging score um, uh, instructs the uh, chatbot AI on the frequency as well as the content of nudges uh, that we are going to give to the patient. So this is on the back end how CHAM segmentation logic works. And it's designed in such a way to support our patients in their care. Uh, however, I must mention that it is not intended to be a medical device. It does not produce, uh, provide medical advice, nor does it initiate or change medication therapy. So uh, as the last point on, on this presentation, I think it would be remiss if I did not talk about how large language models are going to impact healthcare. And specifically uh, in uh, environments where we are data rich, as well as having stream capability for uh, all the tech data that we collect from our EMR system. So large language models are set to change healthcare fundamentally, and they have revolutionized the way we use AI. Uh, all industries are impacted uh, by widespread available, uh, availability of this technology, and it has taken uh, uh, a large language model like ChatGPT six months to uh, be widely adopted, what took the switch uh, 10 years to be widely adopted. Uh, by most people. So out of the box, uh, language models have uh, 
many capabilities such as natural language and, uh, and displays a surprising level of intelligence. However, there are still some uh, limitations uh, and there are significant ethical and technical issues such as uh, privacy, uh, legal risks, uh, inaccuracy, and hallucination. Now, the purported use of these language models in the context of healthcare simply amplifies these issues and making it impossible to use the LLM in production for healthcare purposes. However, uh, in NUHS, we have invested in, uh, in uh, natural language processing and we, and we have, um, and we are going to be uh, using this in production together with Endeavor AI uh, tools uh, in the coming year. Now, this pipeline of NLP products such as uh, hypoglycemia prediction, high risk pregnancy prediction, ur urinary tract infection, severity predictor, breast cancer enrichment projects, these, all these projects will be onboarded to natural language tool to improve their accuracy and also to uh, uh, provide that real time kind of advice to be given to a doctor, what would have been, uh, or what would have been something that we need to trigger on a regular basis. Now, the adoptions of these uh, systems would change the, uh, the safety as well as improve the quality of NHS processes. Uh, we are able to build this model and the speed uh, of uh, which, with which we can do this uh, was largely hampered by the uh, ability to use compute. So um, we have invested in putting in supercomputing capability uh, to improve the uh, uh, performance of these models and therefore uh, accelerate the process towards the uh, uh, adoption in various work. So lastly, uh, because we have open source LLM, uh, data scientists have started experimenting on these models and we are building both what we term as primary and secondary capabilities. So primary capabilities include English language capabilities, such as summarization, writing reference, transcription, question answering, translation and conversational tools such as chatbots. Uh, secondary capabilities are some of the things that I've mentioned earlier. So things like being able to run uh, AI tumor bots, human recommendation systems. So these secondary capabilities involve a different level of data curation and validation. So I'd like to sum up here by saying that uh, providing uh, uh, stream capable AI in the form of uh, Endeavor AI on, at NUHS has given us this tremendous opportunity to deploy AI in clinical practice. Combined with large language models, um, we look towards a future where these AI tools would uh, radically transform the way we can provide care to our patients.